housing in the Bay Area is a problem, whether it's prices or inventory, but conflict arises when people, politicians, developers, you name it, try to find a solution. On November 3rd, San Francisco voters will have to pick and choose which ideas they believe will work to ease the crisis and provide more housing at more affordable prices. And here's a look at the five measures on the ballot. Proposition A would authorize $310 million in bonds to construct and preserve affordable housing in the city. Mayor Ed Lee spearheaded the effort and it won't raise property taxes because other measures are set to expire. Proposition D is a plan to redevelop a parking lot owned by the Giants and turn it into mixed use, which is 1,500 new apartments. 40% of those will be offered at below market rates. Then there's Prop F targets Airbnb by restricting short-term rentals in the city. Supporters say Prop F will force thousands of rental units back into the market for residents instead of tourists and travelers. And most people know Proposition I as the mission moratorium. Highly contentious, it would halt development for 18 months. Many see the mission as ground zero for the housing crisis, at least in San Francisco. And finally, number five, Proposition K deals with surplus land, but many say it could ease the housing crunch. It would extend the city's ordinance that lets the city build below market rate housing on unused land. So today in the 4x4, we are taking four minutes during the four to take a deeper look at these suggested solutions to the housing crisis. And we're joined by Peter Cohen, co-director for the Council of Community Housing Organizations, and Tim Colon with the San Francisco Housing Action Coalition. Gentlemen, to both of you, thanks for taking the time to join us. Thanks so much for having us here. So I don't live in the city, but if I did, I'd almost feel a little bit overwhelmed with so many of these measures. I want to start with you, Peter, in regards to which one of the five you think is most important for those who live in the city? Well, it's a tough question to say which one's the most important, but let's just take A since it's at the top of the list. It actually has a very difficult lift because it requires a two-thirds vote to actually pass. And this is actually investing in infrastructure for the city. So in the same way that we have bonds to pay for streets or we have bonds to pay for parks or schools, this is a bond that's going to allow the city to invest in housing infrastructure. So it's a very critical measure. In fact, at this point, we've got a housing affordability crisis that's affecting folks all the way from the lowest income up through families at middle income. We've got to have the money to invest in the infrastructure. Tim, you, you agree with uh, Prop A there, but is it the most important in your eyes? Well, I'd say certainly it is. You know, I agree with Peter wholeheartedly on this. I think, uh, you know, it's it's uh, motherhood and apple pie. This is something uh, we should all be supporting. And But uh, we would also say that Proposition I is, is an extremely important one because it sets the tone for how we look at um, uh, addressing the housing challenges that plainly face the city. So we'd say that's an extremely important one as well. Well, Tim, let's stay with you. Why is there so much controversy and disagreement on, on how and, and when and how to do it to fix the housing crisis in San Francisco? Well, that's, uh, that's what makes us San Francisco. We would say that there's no disagreement that the, some of the really tough issues we're facing are displacement, the exploding ho uh, housing prices, and the price of land that affordable housing builders need. And there's no disagreement on that. Uh, what we disagree on is the solution uh, to do that. We think that passing um, the mission moratorium, uh, voting yes on Prop I, will make the things that they claim to care about much worse. It will uh, increase displacement. It will increase housing prices. It makes it harder to find solutions for affordable housing. And the city economist, as we all know, just came out recently with a report that just says that, exactly that. So I think that um, contrary to what the folks supporting Prop I say, it's not possible to build a wall around the Mission District and insulate it from the forces that are affecting the whole city that Peter talked about, which is rising housing prices that well, threaten low and middle income folks. Peter, you got to chime yeah. in on Prop I on this one. Sure, yeah. Well, Tim and I actually do disagree on this. Our organization is supporting Proposition I. And not so much that it is the solution per se, but what we've had in the Mission District, which is emblematic of what we're seeing in a number of communities across the Bay Area, is we have a red hot market that's actually penalizing folks who are already there. They're not enjoying the benefits from all the investment that's happening. And the market is only getting hotter. The cost of housing is getting greater. I just got something in the mail yesterday, $3,500 for a two-bedroom apartment in the Mission District. And what folks are saying is we've got to have a cooling off period. In order to actually figure out how to reverse course, 
on this trend of displacement and how to actually come up with a better package of solutions, you got to have some breathing room. I think it's a very basic measure. It's not about creating any walls. It's about saying time is essential, and 18 months is what folks are asking for. Well, Peter, you and Tim, so you disagree there on Prop E, uh, Prop Prop I. When it comes to Prop F. Peter, you say yes. Tim, you have no position. Peter, why yes on Prop F? Prop F is the one that works on targets Airbnb. Right. Well, one of the things that we're experiencing in San Francisco, and again, I just want to say that a number of these measures are not just a kind of moment in time aberration. This is the kind of thing that's happening in response to the pressures on urban America as they become very popular places to be in. And so one of the pressures that's happening is using housing stock as hotels, essentially, for people who are visiting from France or from Kansas or wherever it might be. And it's a nice thing to do, you know, go to someone else's city and stay in an apartment for a couple of days. But it is turning into a very large industry. And you have platforms like Airbnb, that's a $26 billion company, and many other platforms that are making a handy profit off of this. So the time for regulation is now. And the thing that has not happened is to actually have hosts, the folks who are locally, feel compelled that they're really running a small business and that Airbnb as a platform or others have to be accountable to ensuring that that's being run according to regulations. All Prop F essentially does is require folks to run their businesses by the rules. It doesn't stop short-term rentals, but it recognizes that our housing is for residents, and when that's every now and then shared with visit folks who are visiting, it has to be very judicious, and we can't let it turn into a speculative industry. Tim, I got to give you the last word in here before we head out. I mean, do you ever see for see San Francisco? I mean, just prices in general, or is this a, are we ever going to go back down ever? Look, here's what's happening. It's not an argument about values. It's about math. And the city's growing by 10,000 residents a year. Planners are telling us that we're going to have to accommodate a million residents in 20 years. The question is, where are they going to live? And how, where will the housing be produced that's going to accommodate these folks if they're not to bid up the price of the housing that we have already? So we think that it's important to keep building housing, don't slow down, and look for other ways, other solutions that we could all agree on that are gonna produce more affordable housing for the people that need it the most. All right, well, uh, San Francisco voters will have their say come November 3rd. Peter Cohen, Tim Col Colin, uh, thank you both for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks, gentlemen.